Ralph Edwards. All of the glamour and excitement of a major theatrical event is captured as I surprise Alexis Smith, superstar of Follies at the new Schubert Theater in Los Angeles. This entire show takes place right on stage just before the curtain falls. Don't miss This Is Your Life, Alexis Smith, next on this station. I'm Ralph Edwards, and we're here at the new Schubert Theater in Beverly Hills. It's an important moment for Beverly Hills and for the American theater. This star-studded audience is pouring into the first new theater built by the Schubert chain in 44 years. This Is Your Life is proud to be a part of these festivities. The attraction is Hal Prince's Follies, winner of seven Tony Awards on Broadway. What an evening it is. What a surprise we have for someone here tonight. Our story is one of success deferred. This is Your Life, an American tradition with Ralph Edwards, is brought to you by Imperial Margarine. Stick, diet, and soft spread Imperial. Margarine with flavor fit for a king. Sis, you're terrific to give me a shower. Can I help? Oh, these go on the table. You sure you want to serve margarine? I'm sure about this margarine. <laughs> Maybe this margarine's different. This margarine's delicious. Imperial has flavor fit for a queen. Hey, my baby's gonna be a prince. Oh, princess? <laughs> Imperial margarine, flavor fit for a prince or princess. Why don't you do your dishes in Lux? A little Lux means a lot of attention. Jennifer, I, I, I bet you do your dishes in Lux. A little Lux means a lot of attention because Lux gives your hands the gentle care people notice. Guess who? <laughs> Beats me, but I'll bet you do your dishes in Lux. Oh. <laughs> a little Lux means a lot of attention. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ralph Edwards. And I'm here to say the magic words, this is your life, to one member of this magnificent cast. Well, let's see, who's life? Dorothy Collins? It could be your life. Oh, dear, no. Yeah. And uh, John McMartin? Could be your life, you know. I've just no. started. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa Smith, it could be your life. You well, know. I don't know about all this. Yes, and Gene Nelson, beautiful life here. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Yvonne DiCarlo. Well, I'm could still be... here. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you got the wrong winner. You <laughs> no, I tell you what. Tonight, Alexa Smith, this is your life. Because you have work to deserve it, that's why. And you just thought you were going to take a curtain call and go home, didn't you? Alice? Ralph Edwards, may I interrupt? I have something I want to say. Ladies and gentlemen, the first lady of the American theater, two-time Oscar winner, Miss Helen Hayes. <laughs> Has something she wants Alexis. to say. Alexis! 
You know, I've been on the stage since I was five years old, and I've had a chance to observe that it's a very difficult life when the breaks don't come. The very most talented are often, well, those talents are the most fragile, the finest ones. And uh, it's wonderful when you see someone who not only has a fine talent, but has the perseverance to succeed. You have both of those traits, Alexis. And I'm so happy that I'm gonna start off this great, exciting night of your life by presenting you with this special award from the Actors Fund of America. It's an appreciation of all you've done for the fund, and it's also in celebration of the fund's 90th birthday, the 90th year of its help to those actors for whom the breaks didn't come. Thank you, Miss Helen Hay. feel to be married to the new head of the department. Congratulations. I am so excited. I fixed a special meal, Beef Bourguignon. Oh. Homemade biscuits and a brand new margarine. Oh, I like the old margarine. You'll like this better. This tastes great. Imperial has flavor fit for a king. And you should be promoted more often. <laughs> Imperial margarine, flavor fit for a king or queen. And now, on stage at the new Schubert Theater in Los Angeles, Ralph Edwards and his This Is Your Life guest, Miss Alexis Smith. Just a few months ago, you won another award, the highest that can be earned in the theater, a Tony for the best performance by an actress playing a leading role in a musical. Now, that night, as you received your Tony, you said... One nice thing about winning is you don't have to be a good loser. <laughs> I think with great affection at this time of the very talented people with whom I've worked and studied, who helped me get it together so I could be here at this moment. I share it with you. Thank you all very much. Remember how you read the old red car line to dance in school electric? Your childhood friend who lit up many Metro Golden Mayer films and who later was featured on the television series December Bride, Francis Rafferty, <laughs> now Mrs. Tom Baker. <laughs> Where did you two aspiring ballerinas study? Well, we studied at East James School of Dancing in Hollywood, which is You're more now, nervous than yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. Which You've is been just, waiting around all night. You've uh, just been working. Since 8 o'clock. Uh, which is just as successful now as the Falcon Studios as it was then. Uh, Alexis won the scholarship a year before I did, and then I came along. She had a little bit of problem, though. She was always a couple of inches taller than the rest of us. So she always had to do the boys' part. Thank you, Francis Rafferty. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Margaret Alexis Fitzsimmons-Smith. You're born in Penticton, British Columbia, the only child of Alexander and Gladys Fitzsimmons-Smith. With the encouragement of your mother, you begin preparing yourself for stardom at 10 years of age, and you achieve it in your 20s. But you have to wait nearly a quarter of a century before turning in a performance that establishes you as one of the stellar talents of the legitimate theater. The first step was your family's move to Los Angeles, right? Yes. Uh, where you enter Hollywood High. Honey, we were buddies even when we competed for the lead in the school play. Yes, that's the <laughs> and, voice of another triple threat star and your Hollywood High contemporary, Miss Nanette Fabre. <laughs> friendly rival 
girls in high school, Nanette. Oh. Nanette got the lead in the play. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> we both tried out for the lead. Yes. But you know, to this day, honey, I can't remember whether the play we tried out for was Who Killed Cock Robin yes. or The Gold Star Mother. Which was it? Oh. Who Killed Cock Robin. <laughs> right. Yes. It is funny, Ralph, because in those days, we were both very tall and very cool. But no matter how hard I tried, I could never look quite as tall and quite as cool as she could do. <laughs> and it's cute because underneath this cool, elegant lady is one of the wittiest, sweetest, funniest, kindest, most vibrant, yeah, perfect lady. That's what she is. A lovely, lovely human being. Thank nice. you, Nanette. Good day. Yeah, this must bring back uh, memories of the night we did your life. Right? Yes, yes. <laughs> Thanks Alexis, so much, Nanette. Thank you very, very much. We love you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Such a talented lady she is. Yes, she is indeed. True. Yes. After graduation from high school, you enroll in Los Angeles City College, and there you major in dramatics uh, with what professor, Alexa? Jerry Blunt. Uh, who's to have a lasting influence oh, in your yes. career. Oh, During your second year at college, you star in the famous courtroom melodrama <laughs> The Night of January 16th, <laughs> and your performance attracts the attention of both Paramount and Warner Brothers. Yes. And when the latter offers a contract, what was Professor Blunt's advice? <laughs> he said, of course, you know you're not ready. But <laughs> <laughs> if, um, he said, opportunities like this don't come along very often. And if you will continue to work and, and study, I would advise you to sign the contract. Otherwise, forget it. At the studio, your beauty and talent are noticed. The succession of bit parts and minor roles ends. And you're cast in one of your first leading roles. I was the guy who didn't get the girl in that picture. One of your co-stars in Steel Against the Sky, the distinguished actor, Mr. Lloyd Nolan. Hi, Thank you. It's so good to see you. You know, I know why she's so happy to see me. She thought I was dead. <laughs> No, 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 not you. No. <laughs> Lloyd, uh, what were your impressions of Alexis in Steel Against the Sky? Well, I, re she I rem was tall. <laughs> yeah, she was tall. <laughs> uh, I remember thinking that she had a, a very original type of beauty, very fresh and sincere, both on and off the screen. But that, that uh, picture had a significance because it brought Alexis together with a person who was to have quite a bit to do with the rest of her life, Craig Stevens. Mm -hmm. Yes, it did. I think it speaks very well that now, more than 25 years later, you two are a perfect couple still. You're a perfect couple. Also. Thank you, Lloyd <laughs> Nolan. Lloyd, thank you. What's that? This is fun. I'm glad you think it's fun. <laughs> Alexis, your marriage has been a happy one. I can answer that, Ralph. <laughs> it certainly has been. Even though I, well, she didn't want me in Steel Against the Sky. Oh, <laughs> your permanent leading man, television stage and motion picture star, <laughs> Craig Stevens. There's going to be a lot of explaining to do. Yes, yes, sir. And I have to do the explaining. <laughs> yeah. well, Craig. Yes, sir. Tell us about your courtship with that uh, beautiful Smith girl, Alexis. I really didn't get to know one another very well until we were cast together in Steel Against the Sky. Mm -hmm. And as I said before I came on, she really didn't want me in the picture. She had a <laughs> pal of hers at Warner Brothers that she thought very highly of. She had made a screen test, and she thought he should do Steel Against the Sky. <laughs> However, I lucked out and got the role, and I not only got to work with Alexis, but I got to know her. <laughs> And it wasn't uh, until oh, sort of the end of the picture that I got up enough courage to ask her for a date. Well, then, in no time at all, I realized that I was involved with a very extraordinary person. But you didn't marry for three years. Well, that's true. A little thing called recent troubles. World War II came along, and I went into the Army Air Forces. During that time, Alexis's career zoomed. And then, about three years later, 
and a lot of correspondence later, and a lot of serious discussions later, we decided to get married. Yeah. It's kind of nice. Craig, at times you were more in the spotlight, uh, at others, Alexis was. Did this ever present any serious problems? Well, Ralph, as anyone, I suppose, in a similar situation would, would tell you, uh, it's not easy to keep two careers bouncing on the same level all the time. And certainly it's been true in our careers, one of us is up and one of us is down. But somehow, our personal lives has always worked out. I'm very grateful for that. I think it's perhaps because we care very much about one another and love one another. She's a very exceptional person. Mm -hmm. Can she cook is the name. <laughs> you know, she's an exceptional person, but uh, can the girl cook? That's she's certainly not a girl to sit around and uh, twiddle her fingers, as it were, <laughs> when she's not working. For instance, you mentioned cooking. For the first 10 years of our marriage, Lexus literally couldn't boil water. <laughs> but suddenly she decided she was gonna learn how to cook. And Ralph, right now, I would put her up against Julia Childs any day of the week. Oh, I hope no one picks me up on that. <laughs> you cook better than I do, Alexis. Oh, Julia, a good friend who first came to you 26 years ago and who has been with you most of the time ever since, Miss Julia Green. Were you surprised at uh, Alexa's sudden uh, culinary skill? Were you surprised at that? No. They are. These two are the most wonderful people in the world. Believe me. Sure. And you know what she did? She sent me all the way back to New York to see the show. The Follies, of course, because she was such a success. In it. And I'm so proud of it. I had to cry. Uh, thank you, Julia Sweet Green. Dog. Thank you for being here this evening. <laughs> In 1955, Alexis, you and Craig begin touring the country in a series of frothy vehicles. You uh, say at this time that there is one professional goal you'd like to achieve. What was that? I did. And when did I well, say Well, I'll tell you what it was. In case it may have slipped your mind, <laughs> we think you said that you want to do a Broadway musical comedy. Oh, yes. Yes, I did say that. I'll check that off. I was getting ready to fire the researchers. <laughs> Then in 1970, you hear that Broadway wonder man, Hal Prince, is going to do a musical based on a play you had read while touring in Cactus Flower. Your agent arranges an audition. Yes. It didn't go too well, did it, Alexis? <laughs> the producer <laughs> of Follies, Cabaret, Company, West Side Story, and the longest running production in the history of the American theater, Fiddler on the Roof, Mr. Hal Prince. <laughs> statement you just made. Well, Michael Bennett, who uh, co-directed Follies with me, and I were out here auditioning. It was about nine months before rehearsals, and the very first person we saw for Follies was Alexis Smith, uh -huh. and it didn't go too well. Soon after that audition, I assume, she had the good fortune to meet a kind of genius friend of all of ours named David Cray, <laughs> who works wonders with voices. David, whom I've known for years, called me and said, you really ought to hear her again. So the next time that Michael and I were out here, we heard Alexis again, and it was sure better, but we weren't convinced. So we gave her a song that Steve Sondheim had written, the hardest song she sings in the show. It is the hardest, isn't it? Oh, I think so, yes. Leave you, and said that she should study it with David, and when she was ready, if she wanted to, uh, come to New York and sing it for Steve and for the rest of us, we'd be thrilled to see her. Hal, something remarkable happened at that third audition, I understand. She got the part. Yes. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, it was a terrific, it was really sensational. She looked absolutely perfect and delicious, and the singing of the song was marvelous, and, 
And we all looked at each other, and of course she had the part as far as we were concerned, but we wondered what that whole year had been about when we didn't know who we'd met. But I know that we gave a party at uh, my house. It must have been New Year's Eve, I think, or around that time. And Alexis came to it, and uh, though I certainly didn't tell her, someone else did. And that someone was Miss Florence Klotz, who designed the award-winning costumes for Follies. sit here and tell us. Oh, oh, you want to sit over there? Okay. Uh, tell us what happened that night. Well, I saw Alexis come up the stairs and I looked at this marvelous lady and I said, ooh, terrific. What a, what a designer's dream to dress. And I said, Alexis, we've got you in Follies. And she said, I don't know anything about it. And I said, yes, you have the part. Nobody had told her. No. She didn't know anything she about didn't it. She didn't know anything about it. No. Well, thank you, Florence <laughs> Klotz. And Hal <laughs> Prince, thank you <laughs> very <laughs> much. <laughs> you see the lovely oh, lady. So well, that's just great to be here, Saturday. Okay. Thank, you. thank you, Hal. <laughs> Alexa Smith, your reviews for Follies were everything that that young lady from L.A. City College who entered films many years ago ever dreamed of. <laughs> the sudden glare of publicity, the public adulation in no way change your private friendships. You continue to retain your loyalty to those who helped you along the way. As you demonstrate when you thoughtfully thank your teachers and coaches in your Tony acceptance speech a few months ago. I was never in the least surprised. <laughs> <laughs> that Alexis turned out to be what she is today, the toast of Broadway. Your friend and former teacher who recently retired as chairman of the drama department after 42 years at Los Angeles City College, Jerry Blunt. <laughs> You when this girl, uh, excuse me, Alexa. I was going to say, you have notes for me. <laughs> <laughs> Later. Okay. After the show. Jerry, when this girl first walked into your class, did you think she'd become a big star? Well, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> In a word. Now, talent, that, that's, that's something else. Talent you can see, especially when you're in a classroom with a bunch of young kids that are all tied up in knots and got arms and legs and uh, real talent comes along and you know it. But a star, a star comes I think in the person and it comes with the years and it comes with work. And you made it. Thank you. Bless you. That's a good lesson. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry Blunt. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. I mean, a good lesson to all the kids watching in, you know, that's how you do it. Persevere, persevere. Your mother passed away several years ago, Alexis, but here's the man who has wanted all his life to, uh, for this moment to come, the Alexander Smith from whence came Alexis Smith, your 80-year-old father, and with him, Craig's parents, your second mother and father, Mr. and Mrs. Gail Scheichels, and here's the top. I don't mean to interrupt your little speech. Oh, thank you, Bob. Uh, the events of your life become ever present in this gold charm bracelet designed for you by Marshall Jewelers, Fifth Avenue, New York. And so that you and Craig and all your friends can forever relive this evening, we present you with a videotape recording. One of your and Craig's closest friends was unable to be on hand in person, but he did want to be a part of the proceedings. So he filmed this message on the terrace of his chateau in Grasse, France, Mr. Dirk Bogart. <laughs> Listen. Listen. <laughs> Alexis, what on earth are you doing capering around on the stage in Los Angeles when you and Craig should be sitting here on this terrace in France with me? <laughs> you promised to come, and anyway, success has gone to your head and ambition <laughs> is all. All our Christmases, all our memories rather, seem to be tied in with me with Christmases. One of the nicest Christmases, really for me and for you, was the Christmas before last 
when you wrote to me and said, what are you doing April the 4th? I'm opening in Follies at the Winter Garden Theatre, New York City, with three exclamation marks. Do you believe it? I don't. Well, Alexis, we do. Good luck. Have a lovely evening, my love. Bogard. <laughs> Success deferred, <laughs> all the sweeter in its fulfillment. This is your life, Alexis Smith. Thank you and good night. This is your life has been brought to you by Lux, the dishwashing liquid with the exclusive skin conditioning formula that conditions your hands beautifully while you wash your dishes sparkling clean. This is your life subjects receive an easy to operate Panasonic color videotape player. Panasonic, just slightly ahead of our time. Our show car is the graceful new Pontiac Catalina, the big cut above car with a luxury look and smooth ride at a sensible low price. Wide track, dependable performance, and style make Pontiac better than ever.